Uh, so what impact does this case have on the role generally of PCC Police and Crown Commissioner? And what concerns arise about the relationship between Chief Constables and their respective commissioners? Paul West, former Chief Constable of West Mercia, now represents Policing for All, advising senior officers and police commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ron. So the Police Commissioner for Lakeshire, Alan Hardwick, now very keen to draw a line under this whole episode. Neil Rhodes now satisfied that his name's been cleared and he wants to throw his hat into the ring for the Chief Constable role on a permanent basis. Is that it now? Can we all move on, put the past behind us? Um, well, in, so, in some respects, yes, because, you know, there's a very bright future for Lincolnshire and Lincolnshire Police, I, I'm sure of that. Um, but if we just simply move on without learning the lessons of what's happened, then that's a huge lost opportunity. Um, you know, I know from speaking to, to numerous police and crime commissioners up and down the country in relation to this particular case and, and, and other cases, that they have all seen things which, you know, they recognise as having been not handled well, and they have learnt, uh, and if similar circumstances arise in other force areas in the future, I'm absolutely convinced that things will be handled correctly in the way that it should have been in Lincolnshire. It's only to be hoped that uh, Mr Hardwick has learnt the lessons that his colleagues certainly have from the errors that he made. What do you mean? Well, the, the, uh, one of the things that's been extremely frustrating, and, and we heard it again there in, in Mr Hardwick's comments, uh, he, he seems to imply that people have been saying that, um, you know, you should have, well, it, it, you either suspend a chief constable and, and uh, implement what the judge in the judicial review hearing referred to as the nuclear option, or you just ignore it. He, he seems to see the world in black and white. You know, the, it's two extremes. This, there's nobody ever suggested that the allegation should have been ignored. Absolutely not. And I think it's very disingenuous for Mr Hardwick to imply that he only had two choices. You either suspend the chief or you ignore it. That's completely wrong. And, and consistently, um, you know, the judge referred to his decision to suspend uh, Neil Rhodes as perverse and irrational. It was held to be unlawful and therefore it was overturned. It was disproportionate, it was unjustified and completely unnecessary and many many people in policing outside of policing know that and can see that and it, it, you know it would be lovely to hear just a little bit of humility i think on the part of mr hardwick to reflect and say you know what perhaps i could have handled it differently and on reflection the decision to suspend was not the correct one because it is patently clear that it wasn't. Um, I, I heard Neil Rhodes actually and, and Alan Hardwick yesterday in the, the sort of video interviews that they gave and I've got to say um, and I also should say just out of interest I've never spoken to Neil Rhodes directly about this case at all in fact I haven't spoken to Neil this year so I've had no contact with Neil at all but he was so dignified yesterday in the way he responded and, and quite frankly for somebody with his unimpeachable reputation at the peak of his career back in March to see his whole professional life disappearing in front of his eyes for, for no apparent reason many people would have responded in, in, in a much more I don't know sort of aggressive uh, way I, I think Neil's very measured very um, sort of honorable uh, humility uh, just the dignified way he's handled it I think has been quite exceptional but, you know, we've, we've discussed this on BBC Radio Lincolnshire this morning. Yeah. It's been a topic of our uh, of our phoning conversation. And, and I think it's fair to say that there has been a 50-50 response. 50% uh, yeah. yeah. of, the, of the callers to uh, the programme, to Melvin Pryor's morning show, uh, said that they supported the, uh, the, the police commissioner in, in, the, in the actions that he took. Yeah, well, I think, as you, as you know, Rod, I've, I've literally just got off the plane from, from our uh, holiday, this bit of the family holiday. I haven't had the chance to hear those comments, uh, and I'm not disputing what you say, but, but I, what I am suggesting is that I think many of uh, the Commissioner's comments will confuse the public as well. Um, you know, everybody, and I absolutely feel that there were issues here which were of, you know, real significance in terms of the relationship between commissioners, chief constables, the actions of chief constables when su supporting other colleagues who are in difficulties. That, you know, the big issues to be uh, looked at here and to be um, investigated carefully, which of course is what Sir Peter Farhi has done, um, but that's a quite separate matter from whether the circumstances as presented warranted a chief constable uh, to be suspended. I mean, it's interesting that uh, I heard Keith Vaz in that clip there talking about the role of the police and crime panel. 
Um, the Home Affairs Select Committee published a report last month in relation to, you know, sort of early learning the lessons from police and crime commissioners, and, and a good degree of their focus was on the, the events in Lincolnshire. The, the government replied to that uh, report earlier this month, and their very first recommendation, and this is from the government, this is from the government, says, says that um, if ever in the future a police and crime commissioner um, decides to suspend a chief constable, then there must be an immediate review of that action by the police and crime panel. The police and crime commissioner must give the panel and the chief constable a written explanation for the reasons. Now, you know, these are the things that should have happened on this occasion. And well, it, the, yeah, the point is that we, you know, we, we do need to learn, we do need to move on, but, we, but if, if people simply move on, uh, cross their arms and say, well, I did nothing wrong and, and, you know, let's just draw a line under it and don't learn, then that's a very dangerous route to follow. Well, in, in defence, again, of the, of the uh, Police and Crown Commissioner, he, he has said that he would have appreciated a bit more advice on, uh, uh, on some of these weighty matters when, when he came into the post. And th yeah. this is a brand new role. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I would completely concur with, with that. Uh, many of us who worked hard in the, the, the years, in fact, and and certainly the months leading up to the introduction of police and crime commissioners last November, were highlighting some of these concerns and saying that there needs to be good advice in place, there needs to be, uh, you know, people need to be prepared for, for, for these roles. Um, I, I'd, I've been saying for, for a long time, let's just, you know, we, we need to just watch carefully. The first time a really significant decision is taken by a commissioner around perhaps requiring a chief constable to retire or resign or suspending a chief constable, uh, and, you know, let's just hope that when that happens, and, you know, these circumstances do arise, that whoever is in that position, that situation of having to make these weighty decisions, they get the best possible advice, they understand the law, and they act in a proportionate, measured way. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to go back over the coals. I think you can hear what I'm saying. Yeah. That, you know, the lessons need to be learned, and, and, and I know from speaking to the many commissioners that I've spoken to, certainly the, the ones I've spoken to, you know, they've watched, they have learned from Lincolnshire, and they certainly would approach things very differently in the future from the way that Mr Hardwick did in All the right. first instance. All right, Le OK, yeah. let's, let's get on to the, 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 the role of PCC generally, uh, yes. the, because this is, this is not the only controversial uh, incident involving PCC's chief constables, is it? Uh, there have been one or two others around the, the, well, the country. Well, that's right, and, and policing is, you know, it's it's a high-profile profession. It's a great public interest profession. And when you are dealing with people at the very, in the very senior levels who hold responsible roles and, and you know, stressful roles, things can go wrong. And ultimately, it, it's around dealing with people. So, so you know, there, there will always be things that could have been handled better, uh, and personalities will influence things, I think, in, in the rounds. Now, um, the Home Affairs Committee produced this report last month based on fairly limited evidence it's fair to say i said that they, lo they looked at the lincolnshire case they looked at the case in gwent where the, the chief constable had had resigned following indication from the uh, sort of voluntarily resigned or retired i should say sorry following an indication from the police and crime commissioner that they intended to invoke the sort of formal process leading to a requirement to resign or retire that had just happened so so the home affairs captured evidence in relation to that and one or two other things um put it put a report together say it it was, it was good in as far as it went, but fairly limited. However, they are intending doing, and I heard, again, Keith Farge referring to this, a much more thorough report uh, to time, uh, timed with 12 months into police and crime commissioners this November. So they'll be what, publishing... What do, you think, what do you think they will conclude? Is there, a, is there even uh, the remotest possibility that they'll conclude, actually, this was not a good idea and we ought to revoke it? Um, well, I, uh, the, the jury's out, if I can use that term. I, I think... I mean, I've heard Keith Vaz say himself that he was a very strong critic and, and thought it was very sceptical about the whole thing. He, he himself now is on public record as saying he can see the distinct advantages if the, if the job's done correctly. Um, and I think some people have changed views. Uh, others uh, still w would, would hold the view that um, the, the governance of policing could be handled in a different way. I, I don't well, it's think... another raft of, of bureaucracy, isn't it? It's another, it's another expense on the uh, policing budget. I mean, let, let alone the legal fees in this case alone. I mean, it's just another expense that surely we don't need. Well, 
you, you could you could say that, but every every public sector organisation and, and policing is a particularly uh, a, one in particular where huge powers can be wielded by police officers. And to have a, any police organisation without any form of external governance um, is is not a is not a good place to be in terms of having a, a you know a balanced civic society. So. So any arguments, let's say, to say, oh, just do away with all of this. The chief consul can just get on with their job, and we don't need that. I mean, I we certainly wouldn't subscribe to that argument. OK, well, who, who governs the PCCs, then? Uh, well, the, the official line is that the public do, um, and the flaw in that argument is that there is no um, mechanism, and I'm not talking here about Lincolnshire, I'm just talking in general, there is no mechanism whatsoever in law for... Uh, uh, a police and crime commissioner to be recalled in the sense that if an MP, a member of parliament, if something goes catastrophically wrong, there is some mechanism, and I, I wouldn't pretend to know the details of it, but uh, MPs can, the public can basically call for an MP to, to, to uh, lose their role because of something they've done, uh, and there is a mechanism for that. It's a very rare thing to happen. There is no equivalent for police and crime commissioners, so basically the public... And again, I'm stressed, I'm not talking about Lincolnshire, but, but let's say in an extreme case, there's a commissioner who's doing all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful things. The public basically have got... They, they can't do anything about it until the next time their election comes around, when one would hope, in those circumstances, somebody else gets elected. But, but then again... If they turn out to be a little bit of a loose cannon, then there's another four years of uncertainty. So one of the very first things I think the Home Affairs Committee must look at is it's all very well saying that commissioners are, uh, are accountable to the public because they're, they're electorate. But the, there has to be, in my view, there has to be some mechanism such that during the four-year period when a commissioner is in post, if something is clearly going catastrophically wrong... There must be a mechanism for, for that person to be recalled, you know, removed from their role, uh, and then to sort of start again. So, so that's just one simple thing, which I think, I think most people, in fairness, would say, well, I'm amazed that there isn't anything, because there is for MPs. Mm, interesting. Paul, thanks very much indeed for talking to us this afternoon. And uh, let you get back and unpack. Thank you, Rob. Uh, thanks Paul, for it. It's always a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Paul West, former Chief Constable of West Mercy, now represents Policing for All, advising senior officers, police commissioners. Just his uh, point of view, but uh, maybe you have a point of view on this whole uh, conversation that you've heard uh, this morning. Uh, we just draw a line under it now and get on with it and let uh, these people do their jobs. Uh, or are there still uh, questions to be answered? 01522 511 219. Text 81333. Start your message. LN.